The Public Provident Fund scheme was introduced in 1968 and since then over 25 crore PPF accounts have been opened with a balance of about 14 lakh crores lying in those accounts. The scheme is extremely popular on account of its tax-free status, guaranteed returns and its long-term investment horizon. And in this video, which is like an everything guide, I shall be taking you through 14 important PPF related points which I think every investor should know of. If you find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up as it will certainly help me with the YouTube algorithm and if you know a friend or colleague who might find it useful, then do share this video with them. Let's begin. The Public Provident Fund follows the triple E or an exempt, exempt, exempt model of taxation. The first exempt means one is entitled to tax benefits which is received under Section 80C of the Income Tax Act. The second exempt makes the interest earned in this account completely tax-free. And the third exempt allows all maturity proceeds to be exempted from capital gain or wealth tax. Now what's pleasant is that this triple E benefit is there not only at the time of maturity but it also applies to partial withdrawals and premature closures. So for people who are risk averse and in the 30% slab, the PPF becomes a must have because for a debt mutual fund to match the 8% tax free returns that the PPF offers, it has to bring in an yield of 11.4% consistently which is not likely to happen. But there is one small asterisk I did find while researching for this video. So a rule came up in 2021 that says if a person has not filed income tax returns in the previous three years, then a TDS ranging from 2 to 5% will apply on withdrawals beyond a certain limit. So watch out for this, but otherwise the PPF is a very clean, clear and useful financial instrument. A public provident fund account can be opened by any Indian citizen irrespective of their age. The account can be opened in one's name and also on behalf of a minor or a person of unsound mind of whom he or she is a guardian. However, the current set of rules don't allow for the opening of a joint PPF account and neither can a Hindu undivided family or a non-resident Indian open one. In fact, NRIs are a confused lot when it comes to PPF accounts, so here's what I found so far. So firstly, NRIs are not allowed to open a new PPF account. There was a time when this was allowed, but not since 2003 when the Reserve Bank of India issued a notification to this effect. Secondly, NRIs who have an existing PPF account can continue investing, but only till the account's maturity of 15 years or its extension of 5 years. Now, NRIs have been wanting to invest in the PPF scheme for many years, but the government has not been relenting and it remains focused on its original mission that is to encourage small savings amongst Indian residents. A PPF account can be opened anytime during the year. This can be done at any post office, select branches of nationalized banks and also at some private banks. If you're opening the account offline, then visit your nearest authorized bank or post office, complete the PPF account opening form, submit a copy of your PAN and Aadhaar, make an initial deposit of at least 400 rupees and collect the passbook from the bank or post office which will contain details of your PPF account. Now, if you wish to do this online, then every step I mentioned becomes a digital one and the use of Aadhaar makes this process fast and easy. In fact, now you can also transfer your PPF account from one post office to another, from one bank to another bank and even between the post office and the bank and vice versa. Another firm rule that everyone needs to adhere to is that an individual can open only one account in his or her name. Now, if a subscriber accidentally opens more than one account, then that additional account will be treated as irregular and will not carry any interest or tax benefit. It is therefore in the subscriber's interest to amalgamate these accounts into a single account which can be done by writing to the Ministry of Finance and getting their approval. Over a financial year, PPF requires a minimum contribution of 500 rupees and it allows a maximum contribution of 1,50,000 rupees. Deposits can be made any time of the year, with 12 being the maximum number of contributions. Now this 1.5 lakh number is something the government revises from time to time. And I remember when I first started putting money in the PPF scheme, the maximum limit was just 70,000 rupees. So 1.5 lakh is the maximum now and if you accidentally invest more than 1.5 then the excess deposit is treated as irregular and it is refunded back to the subscriber without any interest. 
On the other hand, in case you miss out on that minimum 500 rupee contribution, then your PPF account is flagged as inactive and to revive it, you'll have to pay a penalty of 50 rupees per inactive year in addition to the outstanding minimum contribution of 500 rupees. But pleasantly, even if you miss that minimum contribution, your PPF account will continue to receive interest on its balance at the prevailing interest rates. The Public Provident Fund has a maturity of 15 years and it's something everyone knows. But what many people aren't aware of is that this maturity date is not calculated from the date of opening the account. Instead, the 15 years is calculated from the end of the financial year in which the first deposit was made. For example, let's say you made your first contribution on the 17th of May 2020. Since the date of maturity is calculated from the end of that financial year, that is from the 31st of March 2021, this means this PPF account will mature on the 1st of April 2036. In other words, you'll be making not 15, but 16 annual contributions into your PPF account. Once a PPF account matures, every subscriber has two options. The first is a straightforward one, that is you take out the money and close the account. And option two is where you can extend the account for an additional block of five years and this extension can be taken any number of times. Now extension itself can be done in two ways that is with or without contribution. So when a PPF account is extended without contribution it means the account has been automatically extended for five years, the subscriber cannot make any fresh contributions and thirdly the subscriber cannot opt for an extension with contribution anytime in the future. However the good part of an extension without contribution is that there are no limits to the amount you can withdraw from your balance but I must mention that this option can be exercised only once a year. Now let's come to the with contribution part and it starts with the subscriber submitting a form H at the bank or post office within one year of the maturity date. It's an important step because if you don't submit this form and continue to contribute as usual, then this deposited amount will neither earn an interest nor will it be eligible for tax benefits. So let's say you do everything right, then this option allows you to withdraw 60% of the balance at the beginning of each extended block of 5 years. For example, let's say your PPF account matured on the 1st of April 2023. If it had a balance of say 50 lakhs, then 60% of that so you can withdraw 30 lakhs over the coming 5 years. Of course, the same rules apply as before, that is once you have opted for this, you can't go back to the without contribution option. And secondly, only one withdrawal is allowed in each financial year. Okay, so I've mentioned this one withdrawal per year a few times now and there is a reason for this. You see, the issue with most of our retirement products, and I mentioned a bunch of them in a previous video, the issue is that most of them are taxable, which obviously eats into the returns that we generate from them. Now, in the case of PPF, assuming you are extending the account, there's an opportunity of looking at it as a pension product. And it's that one withdrawal per year that helps us with that. For example, say you have 50 lakhs in your PPF account at the time of maturity and you decide to extend the account, let's say without contribution. So at an interest rate of 8%, the 50 lakhs would receive a return of 4 lakhs. Now I can withdraw this 4 lakhs, perhaps keep it in a savings account or a short tenure FD, but that's a very handy 33,000 rupees a month and the best part is that this amount is tax free. So work out the math, it'll be slightly different in the case of with contribution extensions, but receiving a tax free pension every year while keeping my PPF balance absolutely intact is certainly something I will not ignore. If you're getting good value from this video, then please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber yet, then do consider becoming one as I can then serve you videos as soon as they are released and also share with you some investing strategies, tips and stories that I continually post in the community section. The PPF rules allow parents to open an account on behalf of a minor, but please note both parents cannot open separate accounts for the same minor. So effectively it is one minor, one PPF account. Now from a contribution standpoint, the current law allows a maximum of 1.5 lakhs on an aggregate basis. What I mean is the parent cannot put 1.5 lakh in his or her PPF account and another 1.5 in the minor's account. So together that is you and your child can aggregately contribute a maximum of 1.5 lakhs. Another inquiry that often comes from senior citizens is on whether they can open a PPF account in the name of their grandchildren. And the simple answer is no. Per current rules, grandparents cannot open an account on behalf of their grandchild. 
However, upon the death of both parents and the appointment of the grandparent as the minor's legal guardian, the PPF rules do allow for the opening of an account by the grandparent on behalf of the minor. The interest rate offered under the Public Provident Fund scheme is assured by the Government of India. However, this interest rate is not fixed. In fact, the interest rate is reviewed every three months and is linked to the yield on a 10-year Government of India bond. For instance, here are the bond yields over the last 30 years and over time these have reduced from 15% to just about 7% which also explains why the PPF interest rates have also declined over the same time frame. Now I've read a few articles where some authors have pointed out to this downtrend and have even challenged the efficacy of PPF investing. But what none of them did was to link the interest rate to the prevailing inflation within the country. You see, the PPF interest rates were static at 12% in the 1990s, but then the country's inflation was also a good 10.5-11%, which means on a real basis the subscribers were making only 1-1.5%, which is probably the case even now. So don't look at these interest rates in isolation, not just for PPF, but for any fixed income instrument and always compare them with a suitable benchmark like inflation. Now the interest on your PPF balance is calculated every month and this calculation is done on the lowest balance of the month from the 5th of the month until the end of the month. In other words, if you deposit money into your PPF account on the 6th of the month or later, then you won't get any interest on this money for that particular month. So as a practice, please deposit your PPF contribution by the 5th of every month. PPF subscribers are allowed to make premature or partial withdrawals after five complete financial years. Please recall five complete financial years means you can prematurely withdraw only from the seventh year onwards. Now, obviously this comes with certain conditions, which includes things like you can do only one partial withdrawal per financial year. No loans can be taken against the PPF balance going forward and one can withdraw only up to 50% of the previous financial year's closing balance. Now remember these conditions are for the primary 15-year account and in cases of extension, one can withdraw any amount in case of extension without contribution and 60% of the balance if it is with contribution. The point is this 50%, 100%, 60% is important for a PPF subscriber to understand, especially if this PPF corpus is being maintained for any major planned expense like buying a house, a child's marriage, higher education, etc. The premature closure of a PPF account is possible under two conditions. A, the account must have completed at least five financial years, which means you can apply for the closure from the seventh year of account opening and B, the closure is allowed only on specific grounds such as the treatment of a serious illness, higher education or a change in the residency status. Now with premature closure, there is a small catch with respect to the interest rate. That is, the account holder will receive 1% lower interest rate as compared to what he or she would have received if the account was normally continued. Again, 1% might seem a very small number, but it's 1% from the day the account was opened or when the account was extended. For instance, let's say you had opened the PPF account some 10 years back and you've been receiving an 8% interest. Now, when you close your account prior to maturity, all the interest that you've accumulated over the last 10 years will actually be recalculated, but this time this will be done not at 8%, but at 7%. A request for nomination can be made at any time of opening a PPF account or at any time during the investment period. Actually, I've heard from a friend that setting up a nomination at the time of opening an account is quite cumbersome because the form, Form E, requires the applicant to bring in two persons as witnesses, which can be quite a task. But anyways, nomination is a must do and the PPF rules allow an investor to have one or multiple nominees. This nomination can be changed or cancelled any time during the investment period and you can even define the percentage of sharing amongst the nominees. And in case no one has been nominated, then the legal heirs will receive the investment proceeds upon the death of the PPF subscriber. All PPF subscribers are eligible to take a loan against their account balance and this loan can be availed in the third, fourth, fifth or the sixth financial year. The amount of loan offered is actually quite small and is capped at 25% of the account's preceding two years closing balance. For example, say you apply for a loan today, that is in May of 2023. 
In this case, the maximum loan amount will be calculated considering the account balance as on the 31st of March 2021 and the balance allowance will be 25% of that. In terms of interest rate, these loans are charged at 1% higher than the prevailing PPF interest rate. So since currently the PPF offers an interest rate of 7.1%, it means the loan against PPF will be charged at an interest rate of 8.1%. But unlike the government which announces a new PPF rate every quarter, the loan interest rate will be fixed and will remain the same throughout the loan's tenure. Now these loans are short tenured and have to be repaid within 36 months and in case the loan is not repaid in 36 months then remember the 1% extra I told you about? Well that 1% gets hiked to 6% now which means in our example what was an interest rate of 8.1% on the loan will now be charged at 13.1%. The PPF Act of 1968 prohibits the attachment of a PPF account and its balance for the payment of a debt or liability. This means your creditors cannot get a court order or a decree in order to seize your PPF accounts. However, this rule does not apply to the income tax authority and the IT department can use the credit balance in a PPF account towards any tax related order. So a friendly advice here, paying your taxes is more important than paying your debts. And with this, we come to the end of this essential PPF guide. I sincerely hope you learned a lot of new things today. And if you get the time, then do watch this video again, as it will certainly help you retain a lot of this material. Once again, thank you for your time. Do like this video. I'm sure a lot of your friends, family members and well-wishers will be interested in this information. So do forward it to them over WhatsApp. Ask them to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you three days from now. Until then.